you can't function as a state without laws. And laws are designed to protect... Human rights is part of that, but law is about protecting people, right? Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's designed to protect people being exploited. That's a whole, that's a whole function of, of, of what the state should do. The state's job is to make society more fair, more open, more meritocratic. And states that make that work have been prosperous. So the young emperor in China, for example, in 1400, he said, the best gift my father gave me was 40 years when nothing happened. Peace and stability are massively underrated. Mm -hmm. You know, as Hegel says, the pages of peace in history books are the, are the ones with no words on, because we love war, we love revolution, we love change, we love apocalyptic views, we love drama, and we love crisis. And actually, most normal people would say, in my home environment, I don't want any crisis at all. I will settle for boredom and a quiet Friday night any day of the week. I'll be quiet now. I'll, I'll, no, 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 I'm, I'm no, 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 you, you, you're not allowed to be quiet. Listen, and, um, do we like war, Admiral Mullen? Uh, Imper <laughs> yeah, empirically, it's hard to say that we don't. I mean, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, as I was, and, and listening to the conversation in terms of uh, certainly what the U.S. has done, and I personally think that Iraq, the decision on Iraq was a disaster. And you may recall okay. that we were going to light the flame of democracy, I think. Uh, and definitions of terms are really important. And one of my learnings uh, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and in other places um, The, the, the flame of democracy gets lit initially if you have some semblance of a rule of, a rule of law. If you, if you made me prioritize uh, impacting a country, it would be first and foremost to put in a rule of law from which an awful lot of other things would grow, which was the exact opposite of what we did both in Iraq and Afghanistan. That's where I may, I may be biased, but that's where I think Europe is so important. I think a world, a uh, trump she world, it will be a problem. Well, uh, with all respect, because uh, for the United States or China, two countries that I know relatively well, that I visit, because Europe, we are really committed, probably because of our experience of the terrible wars, two world wars, in fact, start as civil European wars, We should not forget that the most awful events of mankind history were here in Europe and the more developed part of Europe, namely Germany. So that's where it started. The most, probably the most tragic event of mankind, Shoah, happened here in Europe. So the history of Europe is the history of wars, except the last 60 years after the European community was created, where you had no war in European community territory. The philosophical, the question is what we consider the real important value. Is it the state? Is it the party? Is it an ideology? Is it a class? Or is it a human being? That's the point. Some people call it individualism, but I, I prefer to call it humanism or personalism. So the question is, if you think that our country, we love our countries, I think most of us, I mean, I love my country, we are patriotic, my country has almost 900 years of existence, Portugal, so I love my country, but I think it is not in contradiction to be citizen of Europe, And also, why not to say citizens of the world? By the way, that's right. I remember yeah. the Prime Minister of Britain recently that against the tradition of cosmopolitanism said that uh, citizens of the world are citizens of nowhere. I think we can be patriotic and be citizens of the world and care about human rights. And so, and to love mankind, but I think it was Dostoevsky, there is a personage there that says, my father loved mankind in general, but he hated every individual in particular. Right. So that, <laughs> that's not, a, the question is, to mankind is not an abstract concept, like the party, the class, the nation, the state. Mankind means every man, every woman, every child. And this is why the focus philosophically has to be on the person, the human being. And that's why freedom is so important. And I believe that with all its imperfections, the free world is more able than other parts of the world to respond to human needs. I'm not a European, but we are impacted by everybody, by, by China, by America, by Europe, and by their policies in Afghanistan. As I said that we are in 41 years of war, everybody is involved. But no one, including us, as an Afghan, we are not learning from history. That is one of the problems. Uh, 
What was happened, of course, in 1979 and 78, when the coup d'etat and then the Russian invasion, the European and the American and the Arab countries, they choose the most conservative group of people and they train them as a fundamentalist Islamist to defeat U USSR on that time. When U USSR has collapsed, then they left Afghanistan. They left us on our own, with poverty, with really a destroyed country. And then what's happened? We had Taliban and then Mujahideen government, and now we have everybody. <laughs> so I think what is, what is really important, and I insist, that our policies everywhere, the, the democracy, liberalism, and everything, should be based on human rights and respect for human dignity. We do not do that. But one story you might tell here is that the, if you want freedom, if you want democracy, you have to build it yourself. I think there's a, there's a pathos to these stories about Afghanistan to Syria to... To Iraq. Uh, but also to the Balkans, where I was very much involved. And the external interventions have been almost uniformly negative. I mean, with some exceptions. I don't want to get... I mean, it's clear that Dayton um, helped to keep uh, the Balkan War from going on. But, but I come out of this thinking that the stories you actually, in the post-89 world, you want, to <clears throat> you want to look at are a place like Ghana. It's a country that goes down, has a very bad period of authoritarian rule, very corrupt kleptocratic rule, and has now had three or four successive free and fair elections. Ghana is doing it itself. And I, I do no, take, I, 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 take agree with you. I take that lesson being an optimistic one. If you want freedom, if you want democracy, you got to do it. You got to do it yourself. Outsiders can help. We can help a little bit at the margins. But unless there's a constituency at home that is willing to go I all the way, agree. it can't happen. I fully agree. Let me say a few sentences. The main force in any country is the, mayor, the people of that yeah. country. But the international community can facilitate yes. and empower that people to promote yeah. democracy. Yeah. Sure. That cannot be done through bombs. <clears throat> True enough. True. It should be done through education and other basic social services and, and training and building empowerment, empowering the people of that country. Mm -hmm.